Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our first Indigenous History Month presentation. Today, our presenter is Lorena Lynn Cody from the First Nations University of Canada. She's assistant professor in the Soto language and Indi Indigenous language. She's a lecturer at the Department of Indian Languages, Literatures, and Linguistics at the First Nations University of Canada. The main reason for continuing her education and teaching is at this institute is because the uniqueness of the courses, the facilities, students, and support staff. And she says, where else in the world can I go to learn my language and about my people? Everyone should be allowed to learn about themselves. And today, Lynn's presentation is how we acquired a dream catcher. The origin and the meaning behind a dream catcher will be discussed during the presentation. The presentation will include the assembling of a dream catcher using willow and string. And the story will be told and explained of the objects used to make the dream catcher. Okay, I will now hand it over to Lynn and she can start her presentation. Okay. Anin chuko kinawa, Lynn Sagnasi Wizuin, Shigona Nuka Seat and Danishna Pay Wizuin, Kodi Shkuniganing Tunchi, Chikenta Mumaya Yanungum. So, what I said is, Hi, all. My name, my English name is Lynn. My spirit, my Soto name is Hummingbird. I'm from Kodi First Nations and I'm happy to be here today. Okay, um, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about storytelling before we go on. Um, for us, storytelling is um, only told in the winter months. Uh, our um, belief is that because of our spirits, our trickster spirit is more active in the winter. Um, so we tell stories about him. In the summer, spring and summer, we don't tell stories about him because there's no snow on the ground um, and he's sleeping. So we don't mention his name in the spring and summer because we don't want to wake him. He's sleeping through the spring and summer. And another thing, reason why that is, is because in the winter, we didn't have nothing to do and the nights were long. So you fill that night up with storytelling. Um, in the summer, you were busy working, so you had no time to sit and tell stories. You had to get your work done. Um, only one story was told per night, and that was so they would have enough stories to last the winter. And um, um, the, the stories were not only a form of education, I mean, a form of entertainment, but they were also <coughs> education. We did not go to, we did not have schools or classrooms. So this is how we learned our education, learned about the world around us was through storytelling. And the story I'm gonna share with you today does not have anything to do with our trickster. That's why I chose this. Um, and it's the dream catcher. Uh, we call the dream catcher a sup, a sup, a sup, a sup, which is a little spider. And the dream catcher comes from the spider. The story goes that <laughs> long ago, the, when the Ojibwe nation was in the east, um, the um, spider, a sup, a spider woman, had noticed that the spider web that she was weaving on the leaves or on plants close to the ground that it would capture the sunlight. And you'd see the glistening of the sun off the dream cat, off the spider web. So the, the spider woman thought of ways to teach the children about breath, uh, life, breath, and about light, how we captured light. And that was the way with the dream catcher. So the spider used to go and make netting on the baby's cradles so they'd have something to watch and they'd see the wind coming through. And uh, a lot of times they would put a feather 
at the bottom of the dream catcher. And when the baby would see the feather move, then they learned about wind. And that's how we were taught about the wind was through the dream catcher. And it was the spider woman that helped teach us about that. And also capturing sun. That's how we got daylight was the dream catcher ca captured the sun. <laughs> so when, so what the spider used was, and these are just small pieces because when I went to look for willows, they're still not really ripe at the bottom, the thicker part. So I had, to, and I wanted the red. So I had to take little pieces. So I got little pieces here. And what I did before I went and got this willow is I said a prayer and I put tobacco down in the ground and uh, asked for forgiveness for taking this from the tree because this was living. Once it was attached to that tree, it was a living being. So I had to ask for forgiveness for taking part of him. So the red willow is what we use and the red willow is very um, easy to bend. It was very easy to bend. So one of the, the ways that they did the dream catcher at first was in a circle. So put making your, actually I'm gonna try this one might be a little bit better. This one is better. So putting my, my willow in a circle. And long ago they used sinew and we have fake sinew today, which is sold by a roll and it's strong thread. And I also gonna use feathers and I'll let you know the meaning behind the feathers after. And I just took two, what they call for is an eagle feather and an owl feather. But since we can't bother those birds now, we just use feathers. So I just got two feathers and a few beads. I have a few little beads here. So now the dream catcher, because we honor the spiders and we only use seven or eight hoops around the dream catcher, seven for the seven generations, eight for the spider to honor the eight spider legs. So starting, we make a circle. Then I'm gonna take my sinew First, I will make a knot. We'll tie it together. And um, today, nowadays, um, the 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 belief was that we only used willow for babies, for young kids. And there's a reason behind that. The willow actually. When you leave willow for a while, it tends to misshapen or, you know, it tends to go into another form. And after a while, after the dream catcher has been, you know, like uh, rounded for a few years, you will notice it start going into a, a tear shape, teardrop shape. And that's just showing that your child is growing. So your dream catcher too also changes, changes with your child's life. So if you see um, snowshoe shaped dream catchers, that's what that was to represent. But now today, everybody makes them in the, sh in the snowshoe shape. And I'm trying not to do that here right now. I wanna make it round. <coughs> okay, so there's my start of my dream catcher. Okay, so there we go. There's my circle. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie eight points. I'm gonna go with eight to honor the spider. So, and you put a little knot in it just so, so that it doesn't move. So there's one. Oops, I better make them smaller because I want to make seven. So there's one. Then I'll keep going. Two. Three. 
three. Four. I might run out of string, but if you run out of string too, it's just good to, add, uh, you know, um, tie on another string because there's knots on this, so you wouldn't know where you add it on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I guess I could have put it bigger. Okay, I think I'll do that. I'll just make it a little bit bigger here. Oh, come on. What did I do here? <coughs> and the red willow for us is a medicine. Um, it's good for colds. This is where aspirin actually comes from. Seven and my eight. And here's my eight. And this is also what we use to make red willow tobacco. Is the red willow. So there's my eight points. I got eight points on there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going around. First point, first in between. Oh, okay. So it's put right in, right in that first point. Then again, I'm gonna make a knot. And if you see, I'm gonna pull it in the middle of that first one. And I just keep going around like that. And again, in the middle. Oh. Okay, I made a knot too much. I usually use a needle with this and I can't find my big needle that I usually use when I make this. It's easy for putting them through the loops. Easier to use a needle to put through the loops. Once, um, once our tribes, our Ojibwe tribe started moving to the four corners, to the four directions, because that's one of our prophecies is that the Ojibwe people will inhabit the four in the four directions. And today we do. But once uh, our people went to the four corners, then the spider woman was wondering how she could take these dream catchers yet to the cradle boards of the babies and teach them. So she taught the women to do that. And this is how she taught them with the seven or eight points and to use willow because willow grows with the child. And that's how you tell is if your child, if your growth of the child is the willow will start shaping, uh, misshape, will go into a misshapen shape into a, um, a like a snowshoe shape. So these dream catchers were hung on the cradle boards. And what they do too is they, is they take all the bad dreams and they tie them up into the, into the webbing and they keep them there. And when I'm done this, I will leave us uh, um, from the middle. Uh, I will leave my string long because that's, that's where the bad dreams will come through is that one string and they'll, um, the good dreams, I'm sorry. The good dreams will come through the string and through the feathers and come down to your to the head, into the head of the babies. So that it's not really a, like to ward off bad dreams. It's to help you get your good dreams. People think it's to ward off bad dreams, but it catches bad dreams and it helps you keep your good ones. And the type of feather they used to use before was an owl for wisdom. 
an eagle for strength. And it didn't matter which one you use for your child. It was what qualities you've seen in them. If you've seen strength, then you use the, uh, um, an eagle feather. And if you've seen wisdom in your child, then you used an eagle, um, an owl feather. And you already noticed that it's starting to take a, a different shape and that's from the, from the uh, tying, the threading. So the dream catcher was originated in the East and um, now today, a lot of tribes adopted it. So that made the uh, spider woman very happy. She's the spider is very happy to see all these dream catchers out, still honoring the spider for, for capturing light for us, the sunlight for us. And also teaching the babies about breath, the uh, breathing. Un unseen, unseen um, actions, unseen forces teaches our, our babies about. So just about everything that we have in our culture, we're teaching tools. And this was a teaching tool. Do you have any questions? Well, if you have any questions, please hold down your uh, space bar and ask or put it in the chat and I will ask it for you. Just wondering how um, the concept traveled from the east to the west. When we moved, when we migrated. When the, Ojib the Ojibwe migrated from the east, actually we, Ojib we migrated from Minnesota to the east. And from there all the way across to Newfoundland and all the way down to the States to California. And anything that we, when we, when we um, migrated, we took, we brought things with us. Okay, I have a question there. Any other feathers? Um, no, it was usually just the owl and the eagle. And that was to show wisdom and one of them to show strength. Uh, now, today, they use any kind of feathers, so I guess it doesn't matter now, today. I guess it needs a knot. I have to add more string to it because it's... So I just added another piece. Oh, another question. Uh, oh, okay. All right, I'll have to add one. So Spider Woman actually helped our trickster also in teaching because our trickster is our main teacher. And a lot of the animals actually helped our trickster teach certain, um, certain things to our people. And the spider was one of the ones that helped the trickster teach us about wind and capturing the sunlight. Um, why eight? Eight was for um, the eight... Um, Legs of the spider, seven were for the seven grandfathers or seven teachings of the Ojibwe. So honoring both either the spider or our teachings. Now today you see dream catchers with a bunch of points, different designs, some of them look like flowers. And you know, that's okay, cause that's, that's ornamental. It's, and, um, our spider was just happy that people were learning. Spider woman was happy that people were learning to do the dream catcher. Uh, the beads, um, um, actually, the only beads they used to use was where the feather goes. Down the, the long string, they put beads there and that's where the feather go because the, the dreams would go through that bead down to the feather. 
And today now a lot of people will use more than one. Um, the four that I got were supposed to be representing the four colors, red, yellow, white, black. And I just did that because that, that's how we, um, our worldview, are, those four colors are important in our worldview. Um, that, that, uh, that's a good question. How do you feel about dream catchers um, being used by everyone and everywhere? Uh, that was one of the things that um, I think our spider woman was happy that it's all over. You know, and uh, giving honor to the spider when you make them or or giving honor to where they come from. That's the only thing that I've noticed nobody does is they'll just make dream catchers and or they don't know the story about it. You know, and um, anything you learn, you usually learn how it was acquired. And that's one of the things that I wish people would do is when they make dream catchers, know where it come from. Uh, what it was meant for, what we honor it for, because we don't do nothing. We don't do anything for nothing. There's always something behind it, why we do it. Okay, maybe a couple more rows, and then I'm going to add my beads and my feather. I put a question earlier in the chat, and I'm just wondering yeah. if you could respond. So I asked, do parents make these for their own children, or do others? Not, not anymore. Not, and it used to be the grandmothers. Okay. Yeah, the grandmothers were the ones that made them for the babies. And um, for babies, you use willow because, like I said, they grow, so willow also will change with the with the child. For adults, you, you you can use the metal because they're already grown, and you know there's no more. They're not gonna change anymore. So metal, the round metal hoops are the ones that are used for for adults. Nowadays, they never used to make them for adults, just for the babies. And Willow keeps for a long time. Some of them put the feathers right in the middle of the dream catcher. Some will let it hang on the string where the dreams come out, where the bad, the good dreams come in. Uh, no, no, it wouldn't be disrespectful because today also a lot of kids don't get to see their grandparents. You know, because of, you know, movement, people are living in the city. So anybody can probably make them. Okay. Oops. I'm trying to put this at the bottom here so I don't have to put it upside down. And it doesn't matter if it's not floral, you know, how some have a perfect flower shape. And the more points you use, you know, the smaller your or the more it's going to look like a flower. Um, the type of needle, I just use a big either, you know, the big basting needles or um, um, I found some of these plastic needles, they look like a big a big needle, but they're plastic. They have the eye. I found those in the, in the, um, I actually bought a dream catcher kit because I wanted to see what they all give in those. And that needle was in there. So I kept it and I got that from the dollar store. And I was, so that's the needle I use. And it's just to help me go through the, through the points. Otherwise, you use your hand. Okay, I'm coming to the end here. Um, it doesn't matter to how much you leave, like in the middle here, it doesn't matter how big you leave it. You can have it small. Um, some will leave it big because they'll hang a feather right through. Oops. Okay, that one went too. This one I was gonna end. I got a snag on it. Yeah. 
Come on. Oh, come on. Come on, pull. Give, give, give. I just need to loosen that and it doesn't want to loosen. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Isn't that how it goes? Always something ends up. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Okay, and this is going to be my last one. So then, and I'm not, I'm not putting my feather in the middle. I'm going to let it hang. So there's my last one. So then what I'm going to do with this then is I'm going to, oh, this, I need a scissors. I'm sorry, I forgot to grab my scissors. Okay. All right, okay. So what I'm going to do is I want it to hang about this, this much. So then I'm going to cut it. And then I could have put beads in here. You know, I could have put them in the middle. Maybe I'll do one just to show you what I mean. So I can put my bead on here. Then I'm going to still go back in here and tie it. And not, and I'm tying on the outside of the bead. I can get it here. And there, see my beads right in there. So I can do it that way. I can keep on, but this is where I want to leave this and have my, um, the four colors. Um, that's part of our worldview, the red. Um, I'll go, I'll start with the way we started. The East is where life begins. And that's the color yellow. That's what we believe the color yellow. The people in the East, their skin color, we believe is yellow. The South is always white. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, the South is black. The color black is in there. That's the color we use there. That represents the South. And it also re represents the people in that area, the African-Americans. The, um, the uh, white is in the West. That's in that, that direction. And that represents the Caucasians because that's where they come from. The red, the north is always in, is red. And that represents the First Nations because we come from the north and the skin color. So that's what the four colors represent as our, our people, the four people of humanity. So then what I'm gonna do is I lost my black bead. So I'm just gonna use red. I don't know where my black bead went to it. I think it rolled off the table somewhere. And I can't see it. But I'm just going to use another red. And I actually got a silver. It's not white. I don't have any more white beads. So I'm using silver. And my black bead holder. <laughs> well, that's all right then. I'm just going to tie this. Then what I do is I just tie enough to make sure it doesn't, I can actually tie it around the bead too, you know, go through it again and make a knot. There's my little knot and I'm still going to reinforce it. I'm going to tie it. Again, oops, if I can. My fingers are getting in the way. Okay, so I just want to make sure. So you can see it hanging there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my feather and I'm gonna hang it from there. 
and there's your dream catcher. So you can hang your feather from there, or if you want, you can hang it from the middle, like that. And there's the dream catcher. And then just adding a string on it so you can hang it up somewhere. And I'm just gonna make a, whoops, do it to where I can hang it right up. And there's your dream catcher. I don't know if you can see the, I'm trying to get out of this dimness. I'm, my basement is so, the light is lighting is not very good down here. And there's the dream catcher. So it doesn't take long to make. And um, this will, if I kept this for say a couple years, then this whole willow will be, it'll, it'll go different. So that just shows growth. And that's why they use the willow for the baby. Uh, there's a number of, not anymore, before they used to only use one, like I said, depending whether it was an owl or an eagle feather, depending on your baby's, um, you know, what, what the qual qualities they have. Um, yeah, I did, and um, they, they don't really understand, though they think too it's for bad dreams, but they don't understand the story yet. And as they get older, I, I, will, I will tell them. I do that with my grandchildren and children. Anything I do, then I explain to them why I'm doing it. Because that's how we learn. And these are usually hung on by above your head and your bed. That way the dreams can go out there. Some will hang them in a window you know, in their, in their windows, but usually above your head, above the bed where your, your head is. That's where the dream catchers hang. Oh yeah, a um, lot of the um, dream catchers made today, especially if they're made on, on this little steel, like the round, um, the little round, um, uh, metal things a lot of people will put leather on that just to cover the steel and plus for the threading to stay because it will slip around if it's if it has nothing to catch to and like I said today everybody makes a dream catcher like anyway but um, you know as long as it's got the the threading you know the the, the pattern doesn't have to be a a full star pattern. And like I said today, everybody adopted it and people make it their own way. Yeah, they're easy to make, they're fast to make. Yeah. Um, it, when, I, when I get the, to honor the spider, that's how I'm doing it, by making the dream catcher. And I also, when I go get the willow, I say a prayer for, to the spider for taking the willow and also for helping the willow, for helping us make dream catchers. So we just say a prayer. To honor the spider. And a lot of people are scared of spiders and you shouldn't be because they're not here to harm us and they shouldn't be feared. You know, because they're um, all of creation is here to help us somehow, and we shouldn't be scared of any of them. I always think of that when I see spiders. I don't kill them. I try to leave them, let them go do their business. Any other questions? See what was I gonna use?
Yeah, so the four colors will represent the four directions, the four uh, races of humanity and the four colors. That's what the four, that's what the four colors represent. Um, actually, maybe I'll do, I'll, I'll explain um, the parts of the dream catcher. So the circle, why we use a circle that shows our connection to the physical world. The world is a circle. The string is what takes the bad dreams and absorbs them. And in the morning, they release them. So that's what the string does. All the good dreams come out of this one. All the good dreams come out of this one. Um, what else does it do? The feathers, these ones represent ladders, like allowing their good dreams to come in. So that's what the feathers represent. And uh, some beads, they say symbolize the, the spider. That's why some put the beads on this to, for the spider. Some will use the four colors for the four directions and the four races of humanity to honor everybody. And that's why we use the feather and beads. But since the banning of, um, you know, um, Certain birds, the government banned killing of certain birds. Now we can't use eagle feathers or we can't use owl feathers unless they drop, you know, when you can, you find them. But a lot of feathers now are just bought from the store that are used in our dream catchers. You're welcome. Is floating around in front of you. So next time you see anyone a, have any more questions? So next time you see a dream catcher, then you'll know the story of the dream catcher. They're not just there for looks. Hmm. Um, the university is where we teach a bit about culture, um, storytelling, like I said in the winter is when we do our storytelling. Um, usually the city will have storytelling and usually our stories include culture. So you can't learn one without the other. Same with language. Uh, Spider woman in other stories. Um, th that's the only one I hear of her is the dream catcher. Most places to learn about culture is well, our belief anyway for the Anishinaabe, the Soto, the Ojibwe, is if you want to learn culture, you go to your people to learn it. You don't learn it in the city or in the school. So that's where I learned from, was from my family. So storytelling, I think, would be probably the best way to learn about our, our culture. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to tell the story of the dream catcher. I think this is only the second time I've I've told it. The spider woman's name in Soto's a sapike si. A sapike si. And literally that's the net maker, the one that makes the webbing or the net. You can, like I said, for both Cree and Soto, our storytelling's in the winter. And that's the only time you'll hear stories. I'm not sure about the others. And um, I don't know what you mean by make one of our own. Um, you can make your own dream catcher, but um, our stories, we don't make them up, they're passed on. So all our stories are hundreds of years old. Oh yeah, yeah, the dream catchers. Yeah, you can make your own, yeah. That's why the spider woman 
taught everyone like the grandmothers to make them so everyone I guess would have a chance to have a dream catcher. And this is one uh, this would, this is a good little um, activity to do in school if any of you are teachers. It also teaches patience. I took this and taught some kids uh, for the city. We had some kind of classes and I taught them the dream catcher and it really taught the kids patience. So that's one of the things too, in order to teach kids, you can use them, make them do a dream catcher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great for kids to learn. And also learn about the spider because a lot of kids are scared of spiders or they kill them. And this way you explain to them you know, because we were taught not to kill anything that's living. The only thing would be uh, like flies, you know, the ones that are not here to do any good, but the spider is here for us to teach us about certain stuff. So it also teaches the kids to not to fear spiders. Um, my language, um, I was raised by my grandparents and they were speakers. Um, they were fortunate not to spend their life in residential school. Um, my grandfather went to day school or um, I, uh, what do they call it? Industrial school. So he was able to go home and he was um, able to keep his language. My late grandmother only went to grade two, so she was able to keep their language. So that's where I learned it. I learned it from my grandparents. And then I quit speaking for a while because nobody would speak it and I would get made fun of. So I thought I didn't need it until I started university and my auntie was teaching solo. And so I just started getting more into it. And I decided because I knew the language, I knew the culture, and I thought, well, I need to share this with my people. And I guess it's part of something that was seen in me as a child. Um, I had a, there was an old man that used to always come and visit us and he couldn't speak English. So I would teach him English and he would teach me a new Soto word. And I think I was, I just started kindergarten, just learning English myself. So I, we would teach each other. And uh, I never wanted to be a teacher. I always said I'd never be a teacher, but I'm a teacher today. But this old man had told my grandparents that that was my life destiny. I was going to be a teacher. And they didn't tell me this till I got older, till I, was start, till I started school, when I started business admin. And they told me that that old man used to tell me that you're going to be a teacher. And I ended up being a teacher. So some of the stuff that that old man taught me, I share. Uh, cockroaches. Cockroaches are not from this country. So we've never seen them before. Actually, there's a lot of bugs that are here that were never here before. So we don't, you know, we don't know. I've, I've never known what a cockroach was until last year. So we've, so a lot of these pests we haven't had before. We are done. I would like to say a big thank you to Lynn for coming to teach us something new. I never knew about the green, green catcher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting.